when I bought my Bose QC35 some years ago, they were the class leading Bluetooth noise cancelling headphone and in my reviews I was able to show that I felt they were the best choice for a business user and frequent traveler. If you go online now, what you'll see at this, this price point is that in general, the view is that the Sony WH-1000XM3 is now at this point price point the class leading headphone. The only thing I've done to my Bose over the years is replace the ear cushions and as you can see they're in pretty good shape and they still work fine. The question is if you already own a pair of these because many people do should you spend the money and buy an, an upgrade to the Sony WH-1000XM3 headphone? I don't think so. I don't think you do need to do that. So in this video briefly I'll explain why I think that. The packages themselves are almost identical. You get almost the same stuff in both hard cases. A cable, an adapter, the headphones and obviously all packaged up in a nice hard case to protect your headphones when you're traveling. So nothing to choose between them there. Even the materials I would say are very similar. In terms of build quality I think there's very little to choose between them actually. And actually, in terms of the specifications, there's also not much to choose between them. Although the Sonys do have a USB-C charge cable, which increasingly now almost all my devices are USB-C. Actually, that was one of the factors in my purchase. I mean, I was curious, yes, but also I thought it would be convenient to have all my devices to have USB-C charging cables and just cut down a little bit on the junk I have to carry around with me. As you can see, there is a cable that you can use. Other than that, there's very little to choose between them in terms of what you get in the packet. They're both Bluetooth. They're both noise cancelling. Um, the Sony's claim a 30 hour battery life versus the 35's 20 hour. Um, and they both have built in mics and controls. The Sony's has touch controls, a little bit more on that later. Um, other than these two buttons here, one of which is for your noise cancellation and the other is the power and on and off button. That's how you switch it on there. You just have to press and hold that button. Okay. Um, so really, I mean, it's ha almost hard to tell the difference between the two. They look very similar as well, I would say. Neither of them being the most attractive, but they're business-like, functional, and clean and well-designed. The touch controls are actually on the right headset. Um, so ignore what I'm doing in the video, but the principle is the same. You swipe forward for next track, you swipe backwards for previous track, you can fast forward by swipe forwarding and hold and the reverse to go backwards. And you can actually increase the volume by swap and decrease the volume by swiping up and down next to your head. And if you hold your finger to the touch sensor, it kind of mutes the headphones so that you can hear temporarily, which is quite useful. To be honest, I find this problematic, particularly when I'm in the gym or if I'm moving around in a confined space, I find that this can get knocked by, I, you know, when I'm working out with weights or whatever, I find I accidentally touch it and things happen. Um, I much prefer the Bose's traditional um, positive feeling buttons. Even though they're a little bit more fiddly to use, they're much less prone to being bashed in my experience. Both headphones support firmware over the air updates, which I think is really important. And they both have pretty good apps. In my case, I never even really open the apps generally, and I certainly am not going to be spending 20 minutes reconfiguring my noise cancellation every time I go to a new environment. For me, the Sony app in particular is just way too complicated. I don't really think most people are going to be spending time reconfiguring their noise cancellation every time they use it. In terms of the noise cancellation, they are both very effective. Much has been made online of the fact that the Sony noise cancellation is better than the Bose. Personally, I think they're both pretty effective. I can't really tell a significant difference between the two of them. In terms of overall sound quality, however, I would say the Boses are better than the Sony. I know sound is very subjective and other reviewers may disagree, but personally, after having listened to the two sets of headphones exhaustively and using them daily for probably the best part of eight months now, I prefer the sound of the Boses. So there it is really in conclusion. If you've bought either pair of these headphones, you will not be disappointed. They're both excellent headphones, so let's start by saying that. Personally, I think the Boses are slightly better. I think the sound quality is better. I think the comfort is better. 
I think the noise cancellation is very much the same in both headphones. Um, I think the build quality is excellent in both headphones, but I prefer the button setup on the Bose's. And I find in terms of the apps, I think the Sony is a little bit too complicated. So if I was making a purchase now, I would buy the Bose's. If I already own a pair of Bose's, I would not buy a pair of Sony's. I don't think they are a significantly better headphone in spite of what you might read in the press. Okay, thanks for your time guys. See you in the next one.